Yo, what is going on guys? Jeff back here with more Project Xylus. At long last, we have some more Project Xylus, which is good. We are working on Xylus right now. We just did a fresh oil change for him. That is already done. That's not what this video is about. I'm sure almost all of you guys already know how to change your oil. So that's already done. What we're doing today is we're actually putting on a new front sway bar. That guy right there, it's an authentic Cusco front sway bar. We're gonna be swapping out the stock unit for the Cusco unit. It's gonna be a very, very nice upgrade just to increase the chassis rigidity just a little bit, uh, give you a little bit of a, a sharper handling feel. It is a two-way adjustable sway bar. You can go uh, soft on one setting and then a little bit harder on the other. I'm gonna be dialing it in a little harder than, uh, than softer just because I like that feel. I like it when my car feels like a go-kart. Now this is not a complicated procedure at all. In fact, this is one of the easiest things that you can possibly do. It's literally just a matter of unbolting the, uh, the factory sway bar and bolting the new one back up. So there's really not much to it. It'll probably take you around an hour or so. The tools in front of us here are what uh, you're gonna be needing if you don't have air tools, which I do not at the moment. I'm just using uh, hand tools. So this is what you will be needing. You're gonna need a ratchet with a pretty hefty handle on it to get a little bit of leverage because there's gonna be some bolts up there that have probably been there for a long time. So you're gonna to need to uh, have a little bit of leverage. Make sure you have that and a 17 millimeter socket. Also, you are gonna need a 14 millimeter socket as well. Make sure you have a deep well 14 like that. A couple of nuts that require a deep well socket. So a deep well 14 and a 17 with a uh, heavy duty ratchet like that or a torque wrench works as well a 17 millimeter open end wrench. Try as I might, I searched all of my tools and this is the only open end 17 millimeter wrench that I have. It's a little dinky thing, but it does get the job done. If you got one that's a little bit longer or a little stronger, that's even better, but it has to be 17 millimeter open end. You will also need a six millimeter Allen key like this to take the nuts off of your factory end links. And then you will need a flathead screwdriver to take out the plastic clips that are holding on some of the plastic trim underneath that uh, you have to remove because it's in your way of some of the bolts. So just a flathead screwdriver makes quick work of those plastic clips. You'll get those out. A hammer also helps to help you to get some of the nuts off, particularly the, uh, the end link nut. This really helps with that. The hammer really helps when you get this on there and hammer one end of it so that it uh, it breaks that nut loose. That's probably the most annoying nut on this entire project. You can see I also have some PB blaster here. This is just a, a run-of-the-mill penetrant. This is a good thing to have before you do any work under the car. It's good to spray down the bolts and the nuts that you're going to be working with uh, and give it a little bit of time, at least a couple hours ahead of time before you uh, get to it. Spray it with some penetrant first and it will very potentially make your life a whole lot easier. Now on the sway bar itself here, you may notice there's a few little scuffs and scratches. I did buy this bar used, I picked it up, used for about 100 bucks. They typically run from about 250 to $300 brand new. I just didn't wanna pay that much, so I found a guy that was selling one for about 100 bucks and it's still in great workable condition. There's nothing wrong with it, aside from the fact that it's missing a, a bushing on that side, which is not a problem. I'll just reuse the factory bushing that's on my sway bar currently. In links are also included on the Cusco bar, so I'm gonna swap out the old in links for the new ones as well. Still in great, great working condition. It just doesn't look quite as pretty as a brand new bar, which I'm really not concerned about because it's gonna be under the car. You're not even really gonna see it. And uh, this is such an easy thing to uh, install and take off that over time, if I decide to, I can take it off and just have it repowder coated, refinished uh, in the same color or a different color, or whatever I choose, that's totally an option and it's easy to do so. So I was not worried about buying one used. I would suggest picking one up used if you can, so long as it's not bent or, or seriously damaged in any way. Can't go wrong saving a few bucks and picking up a used one. So that's exactly what I did. I do have the rear bar as well and that I did have to buy uh, brand new because I could not find anybody selling a, uh, a used rear sway bar. So I do have the brand new rear one, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on installing the front bar. So as I said, this is not a complicated procedure at all. It's just a matter of taking off the right bolts and everything. You can see as I look in here, you're gonna see a bolt right there that's attached to the end link. Here's the factory sway bar right here, and it's attached to an end link. And this is where you will need the six millimeter Allen key that I was describing before, because on this, if you look at that real closely, you'll see there's a little hex uh, indentation in the center there. That, uh, that hex indentation is actually on the threads itself of the actual 
uh, end link. So you have to actually hold that still with the, the hex key like that, and then use that 17 millimeter open end wrench to go ahead and remove the nut. Because if you don't hold that, that hex key in there, then this whole thing is gonna spin all together and that nut's never gonna come off. So there's one of these on each side. You're just gonna uh, loosen up the nuts and remove the nuts on each side. That way you can push the end link out and uh, that part is done. And just a little ways further down the sway bar, here's a, one of those plastic trim pieces that I was talking about that you have to unclip so you can kind of move this out of the way. You don't have to entirely remove this, but just unclip it so that you can move it out of the way and uh, it's not gonna bother you too much. Right here you can see, here's the factory bushing at, that the sway bar sits in and this metal bracket right here is the U bracket that's fastened to the chassis of the car. Uh, that is holding the sway bar in position right there. There's four bolts. There's two on this side and two on the other side right there that need to come out. This entire bracket needs to drop out right here. Now all of the bolts in the brackets, you can see them up there just a little bit right there. Those are all 14 millimeters, so you, uh, you will need to use your 14 millimeter socket. You can use the shallow uh, the shallow socket for three of them and one of them needs the deep socket. So that's why you do need a, uh, a, a deep well 14 millimeter socket as well. So go ahead and remove those in addition to the uh, the nut here and that whole sway bar simply should come down for you. It's that simple. And for your reference, here's the other side. It's actually a little easier to see on this side. Here's that bracket that I was talking about, the U bracket, the factory bushing right here. And here's those four bolts. There's one here, one here, and then there's two on the opposite side as well, one there and one there. Those are all 14 millimeter and they all need to come out. This whole thing will be removed. Here is the, uh, the nut, the end link nut on the other side as well. So just take all those out. It's a grand total of 10, two nuts and eight bolts. Take all of those off and this whole assembly is gonna drop down. All right guys, so after having removed all the hardware, the sway bar hardware underneath, I got it removed and you can see I've laid it up side by side next to the Cusco bar. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's too much of a difference at all, but if you look very closely, the Cusco bar is just very slightly thicker. It's a little bit of a stronger bar and the major selling point on the Cusco bars is that there is adjustability. So you can see if you look closely here, there is actually two holes on the end of the bar here. This hole right here is gonna be for your softer adjustment and this one's gonna be for your sportier, tighter adjustment right there. Whereas the factory bar only has the, the single hole, so there's no adjustability whatsoever. It's just a very standard, uh, standard configuration there. So you can definitely tell as the end link is already in the stiff position that the previous owner of this sway bar was definitely a fan of a sportier driving feel, as am I. So I am very excited to get this thing up on the car and see just how much it affects the handling characteristics. Even if it's just a very slight change, I'm the type of driver that can actually feel even very slight changes, especially to my suspension setup. So I am very excited to see what it feels like with the new Cusco bar. The installation procedure is the exact opposite of what we just did. We're gonna fish the uh, Cusco bar back up into position exactly where the factory bar was. And then we're just gonna use the same hardware to bolt everything back up. You can see I've already swapped over the factory bushing that was previously right here to the Cusco bar. So we've got both bushings there. We are good to go. End links are in good condition. I don't need to do any other prep on the end links. So let's go ahead and get this thing up on the car. All right guys, and just like that, we have our new Cusco front sway bar in position. It was very, very simple to get back up in there. It only took about 20 minutes to get it in position and all bolted up and torqued down. We have of course our nut there for the, uh, the end link connection. And then we have all four of the bolts on either side of the brackets on both sides fastened in now. The torque specifications for the bracket bolts are going to be uh, 45 foot-pounds for the two outer bolts, this one and the one on the other side. It's a nut actually on the other side there. There's about 45 foot-pounds with your torque wrench there. The two inner bolts, this one and the other one on the inside, are going to be 60 foot-pounds. So torque those down for sure. And this one's about 60 foot-pounds as well, but I couldn't get my torque wrench on that one, so I just tightened it as much as I possibly could and I used my hammer to um, hit my open end wrench and just tighten it in a little bit more to about approximately 60 foot pounds of pressure on that. It's important whenever you're doing suspension stuff that you uh, use the proper torque specification. So that is it guys, that's very, very simple. It's how to change out your front sway bar. Now, as I said, we are gonna be doing the rear bar as well. I have that ready to go. 
but uh, I don't have time to put it on today, but that will be coming. I'll have that in another video. It is also a very simple procedure, nothing to it. Basically the same thing, just a different bolt pattern and all that on the backside. We'll have the Cusco sway bars front and rear and really have that suspension set up dialed in underneath now. I am gonna be updating my bushings pretty soon and uh, getting some, some new urethane bushings throughout the car, so that will be nice. That'll tighten it up even a little bit more, but we're in good shape suspension-wise with Xylus. He handles great, and uh, like I said, I'm very excited to see any changes that I might feel with the new Cusco Sway Bars. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Just a quick short one for you. Hope you enjoyed it, hope it helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram to get more updates on the car more frequently than on YouTube. Otherwise, just stay tuned to the channel here and I will have more content for you guys very soon, both Project Xyla stuff and doing uh, DIY stuff on the car, and also more, uh, more meets and show content and stuff like that that are coming. Stay tuned, thanks guys, peace out, and God bless. Thank you.